I'm going to test it. Is this a viable alternative if you have a tent in, or in an ambulance, a, a van, and we'll see if, uh, if it might be possible. This is the big problem I don't know a solution for is it just gets so hot. Hi everyone, welcome back to my next video. Today we are going to do a test of a portable air conditioner. So here we are, I've got it all out of the box and uh, I think we got really lucky and everything is here. I don't know what all I'm supposed to have. Let's see if I can, but I've got a remote control, batteries for the remote control, manual. This is probably the water. This will probably, you know, it, it's a dehumidifier. It will act as a, it will act as a air conditioner, a fan and a dehumidifier. I'm not sure how well this would work on the East Coast because of the humidity. Maybe it works. It is a dehumidifier. So, uh, so it, it does come, it got this. This is the, goes in the window unit, but this goes in here and then this expands to go across the whole window. You close the window down on it. And so you've got this sealed off, but it's, it's exhausting, which is the main thing you want. It creates heat. You don't want the heat to go into the room. You want it exhausting out into the, through the window. So fortunately, although it came terribly packaged, hopefully it wasn't damaged in the shipping. I can't turn it on, plug it in and turn it on right now because uh, I don't ever plug anything that has air conditioning like the coolers. I've, I've tested a lot of coolers. You always make sure it's standing upright and all the fluid can't be drained out by being upside down, it's old travel. Years ago, I did a review of a guy who, in a, an ambulance, he'd converted an ambulance and he had a, uh, a portable unit. And I thought when I saw that, that a portable unit was the way to go. And I thought every since. So if I had a van or, or any larger rig, an RV, and I needed air conditioning, I believe a portable is the way to go. So this was the smallest one I believe I've ever seen of the portables. It's 8,000 BTUs. It's and that you can find 8,000 between eight and 12 pretty commonly. There may be 5,000 BTU units, but I didn't find them. It's Chinese, you know, nearly all these things are Chinese now. I don't know if any of them are made in the United States. It's from a company named Serene Life. The model number is SLPAC8. The 8 stands for 8,000 BTUs. Why I chose this one was it was a good price. The full retail on this is $320. I got a $30 off coupon. That's pretty easy to find on these things on Amazon. So I only paid $290 for it. Uh, 8,000 BTUs. There are 19,978 reviews on this, uh, essentially 20,000 reviews. And by the time you see this video, there will be 20,000 reviews. And it's 4.4 stars. The reviews are good. Uh, all the reviews are good. And with 20,000 reviews, it seems to be a pretty solid machine. It's not, I'm not expecting it to get here and be crap and be broken. Expect it to run a while. You know, the Chinese can make some surprisingly good stuff that lasts a long time. And I'm expecting this to be one of those with 20,000 reviews. The whole question with air conditioning in a rig, and I think if you've got a van, a full-sized van, you can fit this in your rig. And I think it would cool your rig down really well. It draws, according to them, we'll check this, we'll find out, it draws 900 watts. 900 watts is a lot of power. That's 75 amps an hour. So if you've got a 100 amp hour battery, well, you run this for an hour and you're down, even if it's a lithium, you're at 75%. So you got to have a lot of sun coming in. Um, so that's why for most people, these just are not practical. Even the 5,000 BTU window units draw so much power that you just got to have an enormous amount of solar. But I'm doing something a little differently today, and that's why I think this might now be viable. As you can see, of course, in the background behind me, a tent. I think in a tent, this could work. That thing, the tent gets hot. That's one of the worst things about tents. That This is a bell tent, but I'm going to test this in it because I haven't have that one to test it in. But the great thing about them is, as soon as the sun goes down, they cool right off. They're not keeping that heat inside. You open it up when the sun goes down and it cools right off. It might, be, it might get up to 100, 110 inside that tent during the day, but if the sun goes down, it'll cool right down and be comfortable to sleep in overnight, I believe. Well, again, that's something we're going to test. If you can run this during the day, 
and keep that tent comfortable, then I think you can be comfortable overnight and not have to destroy your batteries. So all you have to have is enough power during the day to keep the tent comfortable, and then you'll be fine overnight. Uh, and if you have a van or a pretty good sized rig, this is, I chose this tent because it's small and it looks like very good quality. This is a, um, this is the White Duck uh, three meter, 10 foot tent. It's quite small inside, but big enough for one person. And I think the air conditioner. And also I happen to have on hand a Blue Eddy uh, to test. Blue Eddy sent this to me, AC 500. It's an enormous, I've got, and I've got an enormous amount of battery power. They sent me 750 watts of solar. I think this combination of that uh, solar and will easily run this in that tent. It might even easily run this in my ambulance. You can't see it. It's a little bit out of the shot, but I'm going to test it. Is this a viable alternative if you have a tent in, or in an ambulance, a, a van, and we'll see if, uh, if it might be possible. This is the big problem I don't know a solution for is it just gets so hot and maybe this will work and we'll see if it will or not. Okay, like I said, I can't run this yet. I, I'm going to wait at least a 20, full 24 hours with it upright before I uh, plug it in and turn it on. I'll run it, plug it into the Blue Eddy. We'll find out exactly how much power it draws. We'll find out if my 750 watts coming in is enough. Can this be viable during the day and then at night? Will it cool off enough and that I won't have to run this at night? That's what you, that's the problem is you can't run these things overnight on battery, no, almost no matter how much solar you have, unless you just have an enormous amount of solar. And most of us don't because that's just too expensive. So what would it take? It would take 500 watts of lithium batteries to run this for any decent amount of time overnight, plus a whole, a huge amount of solar to recharge the battery the next day and then to run this at the same time. And that's just impractical. But uh, maybe in a tent, it is practical. We'll find out. Okay, so we're off, to, we're off to the races. We'll get it in there, we'll get it running, and we'll find out in a few days. I'll see you then. So with the Serene Life air conditioner, the big question is how much power do you need? And I wanted to show you out here how much I have. It just happens to be that I, a series of coincidences, uh, have turned out where I have access to a whole lot of solar. So let me show you the array. This is all Blue Eddy equipment that they have sent me over the years to test. And I, I uh, turn them over to the people because I can't keep all this stuff. It's way too much. I can't use it. I have plenty of solar on my, on my van, so I don't need it. So I give it away. I happen to be in this place with a bunch of friends who have all this stuff I've given away. They let me borrow it back because they didn't need it, which was just pure luck. And now I'm testing the Serene Life with all this solar. That's why I happen to have all this solar all going into the Blue Eddy AC500 that I'm also testing and that we will be, I will be giving away later on. Okay, so let me show you what I have. Over here, I have two 200 watt panels going into the AC500. Uh, the AC500 comes out and splits. It has, uh, out of the inlet, it has four different MC4s, number one, number two. So this goes into number one. They're in series, uh, so that's 400 watts going in on one of the MC4s. And over here, there's two more panels. I tried to set them up so that you can see them. Uh, these are the 350 watt panels. They're also connected in series and then through an extension cable, uh, they go into the AC 500. So uh, I have 700 watts here and 400 watts here. I have a total of 1100 watts. And so far in my testing, it runs that air conditioner, that Serene Life problem free. What I'm going, it, <laughs> When I ordered them all, when I decided to do all this test, it was hot as blazes here. It was a hundred, and then it was in the nineties, and now it was then it was down in the eighties, and now it's in the seventies. So it's not the best time to be doing an air conditioner test. It puts out a good, solid amount of cold air. I'm really happy with it. Uh, and now the big question is power. Uh, now most of us aren't going to have 1150 watts, so I will run it on 1150 watts for a while. I think that's going to run it no problem. And then I will take disconnect, start disconnecting 
them so that we go down day by day. And I'll just turn it on and leave it on. It doesn't matter what the outside temperature is. I'll run it for eight hours and we'll see what happens to the Blue Eddy. The Blue Eddy will keep track of all the power use for us. So we'll just, the big key thing with any air conditioner is can you run it on solar? And that's the question we're trying to answer here. And I think we can. Uh, so we'll just try, I'll try to do it systematically day by day. Uh, and, and we'll just come back here in a little bit. And then when I know, have some more information and let you know then. But this is the solar array I have set up. Uh, right now I have 1150 watts. Okay. So as you know, I've been testing this air conditioner here for a little while now. Unfortunately, it's not really hot, so this is going to be a really ongoing review. I'll come back to you later. Uh, but it's put out a lot of good cold air. I'm very, very happy with the amount of cold air it's putting. I've had it out in this tent. This is a, uh, a white duck 10-foot bell tent, and it's gotten pretty darn hot in here uh, a number of times, and we found this tent, this air conditioner, to put out plenty of cold air to make you very comfortable. In fact, uh, a couple times I've had to turn it down because it was just colder in here than I wanted to be. And so that's good. But my big question is, how much power does it take to draw this? So I have 1,100 watts of solar hooked up to it right now. That And I'm hooked up to the Blue Eddy AC500, which is a mammoth, uh, huge uh, power station. And with Eleven and with eleven hundred watts of solar feeding it, I have had no problem. It it doesn't even with eleven hundred watts, it doesn't even bring down the Blue Eddy from under a hundred from a hundred percent. It just stays there. Now, what I did do was I want to see where the lower end is of of how much power you need. So I know eleven hundred will easily do it, and you can run other things at the same time. And I've been doing that as well. So I put nine hundred. I took out two hundred out of the system and so I had nine I had 900 watts of solar coming in and it was slowly uh, draining the battery in the Blue Eddy so at nine and it's an 800 watt it draws 800 watts but the, it's the nature of solar panels and solar power that you don't get all the power you it claims because the, the numbers that they're giving you are always under ideal conditions. Uh, so they have factory conditions that they meet, and they all meet. And by meeting all the same conditions, they're all giving you the same facts. But those are perfect conditions, and you are never working. You know, in, real, in the real world, you're not working in perfect conditions. So I'm not really getting all 900 watts. So this was slowly draining it. And so if you have 900 watts hooked up, this is going slowly going to drain your batteries down. And, you know, you're going to be running other things at the same time. You're going to want to be recharging your batteries from last night. That's one of the things you're going to do. You're going to be running your fridge, probably, and it's going to be hot, so it's going to be running more. And you're going to be running a fan, and you're going to be cooking, and you're going to be doing all kinds of things. So 900 watts isn't enough. It, it will get you by, and you could run it for a couple hours, and then let let it recharge. That would work just fine. And if you had a well-insulated rig, you could run it for an hour and have it off for a couple, probably really well. That'd be not a problem. And th so uh, 900 watts will do it if you do that, that staggered. It won't do it continuously. You can't turn this on and run it all day at 900 watts. But you almost certainly don't have to. So if you run it for a couple hours, you run it for an hour, get it nice and cool, turn it off, have it off for an hour, well, in that ex that hour in between, you've recharged your batteries, hopefully, and kept everything up and going. 900 is really kind of the minimum I would recommend anyone to try and run an 8000 BTU portable air conditioner like this Serene Life SLPAC8. That's the model number of this. Uh, it's a great one. Puts out a lot of cold air. It, it works. Seems to be really solidly made. I would not hesitate to buy it again. I'm going to continue to run it. I've upgraded, I'm going to upgrade the solar in my van from 700 to 1100. And I'm going to run this and I'm going to give you really good solid data it coming up. Right now I don't have really solid data. This is things I kind of already knew. I always knew it took about 750 watts as a minimum to run an air conditioner for any amount of time, but it really takes 11 to 1200 to, to be doing it for any length of time at all. You really need that much power. But it's doable and that isn't uh, anymore. Uh, solar's gotten so cheap, you can probably afford to buy that. Okay, 
I love this unit. I wouldn't hesitate to buy it again or recommend it to you. There will be a link down below. Um, and so I like this a lot. And I, it seems huge, but remember, it's a vertical column. And that isn't so hard to find in, in, in a van or an ambulance. or a, I've got an ambulance, of course. Uh, a van, it would be a little hard. But if you have any kind of an RV, you could probably fit this in an RV no problem. This will tuck away in a corner. Uh, you got to do deal with the hose. That's a pain, but you can deal with it. Um, I like it. I like it a lot. And if you have enough solar, or if you have regular, you want to run your generator, you're going to need a Honda 2000 or a clone. You could run this thing easy. Keep your batteries charged. Charge the battery at the same time. Keep that hot. Run it sometimes on the batteries. So if you got 500 watts of solar and a Honda to make up the difference, you're golden. Why not have an air conditioner if you can? If you can, and I think that is really one of the way one of the ways that could make this work really easily. You have a good amount of solar, 500 watts, 700 watts. I have 700 watts, and an air and a Honda 2000 or a clone. You're golden. You can have air conditioner if you want it. No problem at all. Okay, I hope that helps. I hope that helps you to understand. And I'm going to do a long term review. I'm keeping this. I usually buy stuff, test it, give it away. But I'm going to keep this and uh, upgrade my system on my our ambulance to uh, have enough to run it. And I'll let you know to exactly how this works with 700 watts or with 1100 watts. I want to have both. But for now, I can say this is a great unit. I wouldn't hesitate to recommend it to you. It's around $300 on Amazon. A link is in the description below. Uh, so I hope this, re this review helps you. So if you got anything out of this video, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel. Hit that thumbs up button, and we'll talk to you later. Bye now.